Good day guys and welcome to the channel. Today's video is not about the Boxster, but about a beautiful classic car. Let's go check it out. So this is Mike, guys. He's got a beautiful, well, I'll let him tell you about it. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, the, the channel is an everything automotive channel, but uh, featuring classic and muscle cars, and that is one of the things I love doing. So I appreciate you doing that. Um, what do you got here? Tell us about it. This is my 1970 Monte Carlo. Okay. I'm the proud owner, of course. Uh, I've owned it for 10, 11 years now. Honestly, I've lost track. Um, it was my first car actually that I bought, so I bought it just out of high school. Oh, good, uh, good. Yeah, um, you don't seem that old, so you've had, you're, well, you're 10 years out of high school, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, good, yeah, good for you. And and that's, I'm surprised because a lot of people don't buy these kind of cars coming out of high school, but that's pretty cool that yeah. you're into the classic cars. What's the story behind it? Is it, it was it somebody's in the families or did no, you just not happen to see it? Um, well, okay, I fell in love with the Monte Carlo. I've always loved classic cars. Yeah. Um, but in uh, 2006, I guess it was, uh -huh. the little Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift thing happened. Oh, yeah, and the yeah, intro yeah, yeah. scene with the Monte Carlo. Gotcha. And I was 16 at the time. I had like just started driving and I was like, oh, yeah. Hooked you on the Monte Carlo. Oh, hooked me on the Monte Carlo. Um, and of course, that car was all modded up and I loved the classics with the chrome and, and the style. Um, but it kind of hooked me on it. And then when I actually found one, I was like, yeah, I'm buying that's, it. That's, I the one, right? it. that's the well, one, right? Well, it looks, it looks pretty nice. Is it, what, when you bought it, was it like this or? Um, Not you, so much. Um, what the, have you done to it? So the paint and body I haven't touched. So mm -hmm. the uh, art on the hood there, mm -hmm. um, it's very nicely airbrushed actually. It wasn't my doing. Um, this was this was there. Uh -huh. um, so all the little blemishes and things, mm -hmm. that was all, um, you know, is what it, it, is. it is what it is, yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty expensive, uh, expensive to be it uh, is going over the car and redoing it all right so absolutely and i was is more there... interested in driving it so i've been yeah, the yeah. mechanicals on right, it so right what's the story back. with this is there any meaning to this uh i don't really know i think it's kind of weird honestly but um i actually ran into the guy who painted it he did sign it here oh yeah um Richie. So it looks like he did it in 95. Uh -huh. i don't really know for sure but it was parked out in front of my parents house and the guy drove by slammed on his brakes pulled over and he goes, hey, I painted that. And like, oh, I that talked right? to the guy That's for cool. probably half an hour about it. That's cool. Um, yeah, but he was commissioned to do it. It wasn't his car, and, and right. so he doesn't know the importance behind it. Um, so I don't really know the importance GT behind Auto's it. GT Auto's got that got anything yes. to do with that guy there? Yeah, so that was done at GT Auto Works, which is in Toronto, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, I've never actually been to the shop, but... Mm -hmm. Apparently they do good custom games. Yeah, it, so. looks, it looks beautiful. I'm, I'm sure there's some kind of meaning to it. No doubt, but, just uh, not to me. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I I don't do stuff like and I wouldn't do stuff like this in my car. However, I'm sure this is, uh, uh, like I said, meaning to somebody. And, yeah, probably. Uh, and like the actual detail is really work cool. is fantastic. Yeah, very nice work. Yep. Yeah, very so, nice. You know, that's why I haven't touched the body, but uh, all the mechanicals, so the brakes, the lines, um, the engine I've torn completely down and started over. It didn't run very well when I got it. Okay. Um, it had all kinds of performance parts on it that really weren't designed to go together. Mm. Honestly, the car yeah. was way too big. It's just a small block. Um, so all kinds of things. So it was really sluggish. And, well, just uh, a small block doesn't mean much. I, I've done oh, some sure. cars with some small blocks that are running tens. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I mean, uh, nothing against the small block, yeah. <laughs> but it was a, it was a small block yeah. with like an 850 carb on it. Not, so yeah. like it way over carb, sort way of thing. over yeah. carb. So it had all kinds of trouble getting off the line. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was going to drive it and enjoy it. Um, you know, I wasn't going to worry about the paint and stuff. I really wanted yeah. it to be a solid driver. So, well, I mean, there's the some blemishes, but it still looks fantastic. I mean, it's a 1970. Yep. I mean, I mean, obviously, it's been painted after that, but you know, yeah, it has. Been I, you know, to obviously. be showroom, it's on a different level, right? And and there's nothing wrong with a car that you, you can drive, absolutely, right? You know, like, well, and that's why I bought it. I bought it to enjoy it, um, yeah. and I do love the mechanicals of it. I like working on it. It's never been inside a shop since I bought it, um, so it's just you've one done of those it things. all, nice. done it all. I nice. do it all myself, and I'm really happy to do it. I like it. Nice. Um, you want to check out the engine? Yeah, pop yeah. the hood. Let's see what we got here. It's nothing crazy, of course. All well, it's all right. Nothing wrong with that. But it's 350? Stock. Yep, 350. 350. You went to the Rochester and yep. there was a Holly 850 on it before? Is that what was on it? It was a Edelbrock 850. Edelbrock 850? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, typical of guys to swap out into a Holly or an Edelbrock. You right. know, even back in the day, that was one of the first things you did, you know? Yeah, you of course. A performance mod, you went and swapped out the car for a nice four barrel Holly or something. Sure, sure. Um, but everything else I've stuck back to kind of stock. So. 
Um, everything's kind of period correct to a, a best I could do with mm -hmm. limited time and money. Sure. Is it the original block, you know, or is... I don't know for sure. Well, that's not true. I don't know what block it is. I'm 99% sure it's not original. It's not the numbers, but yeah. again, again, we're, we're, you're driving it, right? So exactly. <clears throat> yeah. It's and time correct. It is period correct. Yeah. yeah. Period correct. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely got that going for it. Everything else is correct. What did it. you change on it that he had done before? You said the carburetor was there. Yeah. So, um, the carb, the intake, the heads, uh, it did have exhaust headers on it too. I did. Um, yeah, it did. And you went back to manifolds really, eh? I did. Yeah. Back to manifolds and the two inch exhaust the way it's meant to be actually. So really? it had Good. big three inch collectors on it. And it droned really bad. It just oh, boom all the time. Nuts, drive you nuts. Yeah, it was just echoing in the cab. And uh, I was going to drive this thing, you know, four or five hours on road trips. And, right. And it's like, there's no, no way. No way you're doing that with that. No, right? exactly. And you changed the heads. And what heads were on there? Uh, the heads that were on there were, uh, they were rather large chambers, but they weren't making great compression on it. Uh, okay. So um, I think there were 74 cc heads uh, that were okay. on there. Um, so again, it had all these performance mods, had, you know, the, the big flow curve and the big flow manifold but then it had these heads that were really set up for more like a boost you know if yeah, you're gonna run yeah. a nitrous or something like that you'd run heads that had a little more volume in them right so um, you, you had no torque basically i had that? zero bottom end torque yeah exactly okay. that was exactly my issue yeah. so swap these heads on these are 64 cc heads a little more correct of what would be on the car when it was new right so right. it doesn't make huge horsepower numbers especially in the top range but off the line it's a lot of fun to drive it's fun yeah, yeah. and you're not drag racing this thing anyway no. so it, it's a, no, exactly it's something you want to drive and have fun with yeah well the factory color was yeah champagne gold that's what it was called okay yeah yeah Nice. A little hint of it there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
or rent it at all. Or, I know that's not what you bought it for, but some people still will take it out for those kind of things. That, um, or do I, you just basically drive it around town? I basically drive it around. I would take it to a track. I'm not opposed to racing. I yeah. mean, that's great. Um, but that's but not I what do, you're doing Yeah, it's it. not what it's I'm not doing what with it. Doing. Yeah. It's honestly, at the end of the day, it's a big car, and it's got, you know, rear-end gears that are like, you know, 275 yeah, or something like cruising, that. Yeah, for cruising, for cruising. It, it's like, this thing is going to lose to just about anything out there. Yeah. And I know that. Um, that's not what it's but for. But it's not what it's for. No. And it's not what it was ever really for. Right. If, if you were going to race something back in the day, you were looking at, you know, big block Chevelles right. and arrows and stuff. Like, right. Um, Although I, I have seen some of these with the big block in it. Yes, and, they, uh, they did come, uh, they had the factory option of the 454, but uh, even off the factory line, the option was the LS5, which was the detuned version. Right. Um, so the LS6 was your big 450 horsepower Chevelle block. Right. Um, which this didn't come with, it wasn't even an option. Well, they couldn't put their flagship engine in a, in a, in a not a Chevelle, right? Well, so for sure. This was branded as a luxury kind of deal. It right. wasn't supposed to be a muscle car, right. really. Right. You know? So yeah, it's not keeping up with any Hemi Roadrunners. No, 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 no. Way. And, and that's okay. That's okay though. Exactly. This, I'm happy. This, I, I like honestly, in the little bit that I've been in this car, I could tell that you could probably go on a road trip with this and be very comfortable, and uh, you know, not have to worry about too much. It's nope. It, it seems really solid. Mike has been crazy enough, or nice enough. I'm not sure which one to allow me to uh, to drive his car. So this should be interesting for him <laughs> What's, give me some stories behind this. Stories behind this. Well, um, well, as a kid, my parents, they had a 1981 Buick. Okay. Um, had a uh, small block in it. It was a 307 Olds engine, actually. Nice. Just Oldsmobile engines just end up in Buicks. Um, yeah, they're a different engine altogether. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we had that for a long time, and it eventually sat in the driveway kind of rotting away. But I was always tinkering with it, playing with it. That's where I learned how to rebuild a Rochester carb. That's, that's kind of how I got nice. into all of it. Um, and I could pull that car apart without fear of damaging things or, <laughs> or, or having to get it back together again even because I understand. the car was just sitting there rotting away. So, right. Um, but I took it as kind of a mission to actually get it back together and make it work. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always enjoyed it. I've always loved doing that, the mechanical stuff. And my dad certainly instilled a philosophy in me that... Um, you know, if you're gonna own something, you need to know how it works. Right. It's like don't don't buy something and then just you know expect someone else to care for your stuff. Right. Or fix right. Your stuff. Yeah. Do it yourself. You know, do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and obviously and, not everybody is rebuilding transmissions, but no, to a point you should be able point. to maintain your own things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where and, that came and from. it gives you some sense of pride towards what you're doing in the car Absolutely. that you have, right? So. Now you were saying that there's a following for Monte Carlos that you know of. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So um, first gen Monte Carlos specifically. So yep. 1970, 71, 72. They were all this particular body style, right. minor changes to them. Um, they're that whole sort of deal people really seem to click with. Mm -hmm. um, so there's big groups around those. I'm not affiliated with any of them, but there's groups with thousands of members and they're just diehard fans. Right. Love the cars, own multiples of the same car basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I don't really get why you don't own six of the same car. But yeah, you know, if you like it, yes, then you like it. They do different, maybe some are different 
different things done to them and stuff. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm going on Saturday. Hopefully, Kim, if you're watching, you better follow through with that. Saturday, uh, I'm going to see a gentleman who's got a few of these. He's got about four or five cars, and he loves these cars. So uh, I hope he's not upset that your video came out first. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because he's been stalling for a long time on that video. So anyway, uh, no, I mean, that I, I could understand why there's a following on him. Like I said, I know I, I like these from when I was a kid. And uh, when you uh, messaged me and we talked a little bit, I thought, oh, that's, you know, it's going to bring me back a little bit when I see this car. So, cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Now, the Buick, you were talking about your parents' Buick. Yeah. The, um, um, what do you want to know? Well, no, I, I just, you know, <laughs> I this, you reminded me when I was a kid, uh, my dad had a, like a, Omni 024 or something like that piece of junk back in the 80s. They were nothing special about them whatsoever. However, I learned everything on that car. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a cheap car at the time, and after two or three years, they were scrap. Uh, that's how they were made back then. But um, that was my car that I used to go to uh, high school and college. Uh, I was able to use. I had a Roadrunner, but I, you know, didn't want to drive that all the time, right? So I, I take my dad's car uh, because he got rides to work. So I learned brakes right. um, you know everything on that car and like you say it didn't matter if you screwed something up because it would you could fix it it, yeah. it wasn't a big deal like it wasn't a big deal so I can relate to the Buick story uh, yeah. you know uh, that's that's how you learn right most of the time it's with your parents car unfortunately for them yeah it's well I think it's part of being a parent a little yeah, bit you sure, know, I'm a sure. parent now and I, I've realized even in myself that when my kids are looking to tinker on something I'm sure. gonna facilitate that sure knowing that that's part of learning is damaging yeah. things screwing things up for sure um, you know, so you're gonna thing. give this car to your son is that what you're saying no I'm kidding I'm honestly kidding. probably you know it'll yeah. probably end up kind of right? going that way if he's into if he's it into it yeah um, but I'll encourage him to take his own thing if he's into something totally different you know junior drag racing whatever he gets into right if it's not muscle cars that's cool that's cool you yeah know, whatever yeah um whatever he enjoys yeah i enjoy this so that's my, my that's, deal that's your time that's where you spend do you, now do you spend much time on it anymore or is it pretty well you where you've got it it's, you know where you uh, wanted it to be sort of it's thing it's always a work in progress it is um, yeah you know things are constantly in need of repair and whatever it's just mm -hmm. the way cars are sure um, for sure know. i know about that yeah i exactly. got into this little money pit here and uh, actually there's been nothing wrong with it but i've been doing a lot of the things that i know go wrong on them so you know it, and it, i know what you mean you're always tinkering it always, just always yeah, continues yeah, uh, yeah and i do enjoy doing it and the nice thing about it being a hobby of a car and not a daily car mm -hmm. is that there's never a time crunch so it's not like i'm trying to get to work and it's like oh right. crap this thing is not working or there's a problem i got to rebuild this car but have gone around to it right it, it, you know it can get done whenever i want to do it right. whenever i have time right. so it really is fun instead of it being a yeah, you know, yeah. labor and freaking out trying to hurry up trying to get it yeah, done yeah let's I just understand. do it let's go yeah. i understand i i notice you've got big tires on this and i notice your <laughs> the van has got a little bigger tires than that <laughs> i like big rubber on yeah i see say? that <laughs> but no anyway i think that uh uh, you know, I appreciate very much, Mike, that you're doing this, and hopefully uh, some people see your cars because I know a lot of people that have these kind of cars don't like to put them on social media too much, and I don't want to toot their horn or you know. But it's a labor of love, so I'll do it for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, some people are humble and they don't want to uh, show off their cars, so I hope to do that for people around here anyway. Absolutely, oh, it's so, my pleasure. And when I'm at car shows and stuff like that, you know, people, anyone out there, come by, talk to me. I'll let your kids sit in it. I've done that at shows. Like, it's good. no big deal. It's good. just a car. It's there to be enjoyed. So good. Appreciate that yeah, very much. Me. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it much, man. Appreciate it. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, guys. It's pretty cool to see a young man uh, get into a car like that, coming out of school at 19 years old. Uh, you know, nowadays you see young kids. You know they get in new cars right away mustang gts corvettes that kind of thing uh, but it's pretty cool to see a young guy get into an old classic car like that i really enjoyed this video hope you guys did too if you did give it a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one peace